training and stuff like that. And um, Can everyone hear me? All right, it's 7 o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I'd like to call this Planning Commission Draft 2013 Master Plan Public Hearing on today's date of December 4th, 2013 to order. Can we stand and pledge allegiance, please? Because I'm not sure your mic's on. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Planning Commission wants to thank all of you for coming out tonight. It's a, it's a nice, healthy turnout. We, we appreciate you taking part of your Wednesday evening to share these comments with us. And while we may look like members of the Planning Commission, actually it's just giant sponges up here. We are here to listen to what you have to say. We are here specifically to hear your comments. We're not here to give feedback or to answer questions or to rationalize or defend anything that we have put into the plan at this point. We are here to listen to what you have to say. This is part of the due process that we use in Mount Airy for this kind of a master plan cycle. First, there were public forums. We had modest turnout to that. But people with experience in attending these told us Mount Arians will come for the public hearing. And sure enough, you did. So we're here to listen to what you have to say. Because of the number of folks that are here, and I suspect the number that want to speak, we're going to ask you to observe a time limit of two to three minutes per speaker. Okay? And right over here is a lady, a town staff member by the name of Annalise. Annalise, raise your hand. Annalise has a couple of little signs. She has one for 60 seconds that she'll raise. After a couple of minutes, she'll raise up that one. So you'll know there's 60 seconds remaining. She has a second one marked 30 seconds. And so you'll know you're 30 seconds away from the time that we would ask you to finish up by, if possible. Um, in a minute, I'm going to get a stroke count. Uh, when, you, when you came in, we asked you to to tell us which of the rezonings or which of the items you wanted to speak to. That was to give us an idea of, of which ones were, um, were a priority tonight. We're going to move those toward the front, OK? Um, and here's the, here's the process and the sequence. We'll ask the property owner or the person who submitted the rezoning request, we'll let you speak first. And then we'll ask anyone else who wants to make a comment about that property or about that rezoning to speak, okay? And then we will give the property owner or the submitter the opportunity for a rebuttal or if they want to clarify anything, okay? We had asked for that rebuttal time to be shorter, maybe in the nature of 60 seconds or so. Uh, let's see, what else? Again, I want to reiterate, we are here to listen primarily to your comments, okay? We're not going to be speaking. It's, it's all to receive what you have to say and your thoughts. We'll take all of that and combine that with the comments and the feedback that we've had already. We're receiving comments by email. We're receiving them in, uh, on written forms that have been provided, okay? And also this evening, and as you will note, there are cameras here, okay? So we are making a video of the session tonight. And each of us on the Planning Commission will receive a copy of that, okay? We're also going to leave open until close of business this Friday the opportunity for any of you who might want to submit a written comment. Maybe there's something else you wanted to say you didn't have time to tonight, or you think of something else. Okay, you'll have until close of business this Friday to get that into uh, Town Hall, um, if, if that's your pleasure. Okay, you don't have to submit a written comment if you're speaking tonight. If you'd like to, you know, by all means. We're going to go through all of those comments. We're going to review them carefully, okay? There won't be any deliberation by us tonight. That will be in a work session, at least that'll be the start of it, that we'll have uh, either the 16th or the 18th of December. We haven't 
firmly decided yet, but somewhere around mid-December, okay? More than likely, we're not going to be able to work through all of the comments and all of the feedback in that one work session. We'll probably spill over into January, okay? But as soon as we're able, we will tweak the final draft of the master plan. We will then present it to the town council, okay? They will consider it, and they will schedule their own public hearing. At the very earliest, that would probably be no sooner than February, okay? But that's just guessing at the timing. It, it's not going to be probably for a couple of months. This evening, though, is all about what you want to tell us and share with us in comments you want to make about any aspect of the master plan. Okay. Uh, do we have anyone from either any of our adjacent counties or a state agency that wants to, that's in attendance and wants to make a comment tonight? All right, and there being no one, we will move on to the property rezonings, the applications and recommendations. Okay, all right. And it looks like the most tick marks here are for 806 Park Avenue, the O'Brien property. So we'll deal with that one first. Uh, next, we will deal with Wildwood Park 7. Then the East Ridge Ridge Court property. Then the Carnival Grounds. The Baker Avenue properties. Um, Colwell Avenue, South Main, Twin Arch Business Park, and the remainders. Okay. Again, we're going to ask the property owner or the person who submitted the rezoning request uh, to speak first. And for anyone else who wants to speak afterward, we'll ask you to go ahead and, and, uh, and line up uh, over here against the wall. Uh, you can go in any order that you would like. All right. So, Dr. O'Brien. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm Michael O'Brien. My wife and I are requesting rezoning for our property at 806 Park Avenue. I'm a veterinarian who moved to Mount Airy and bought my practice in 1985. I was granted a special exception on October 1987 to operate my practice at 806 Park Avenue. Prior to my purchase of this property, it had been used for many commercial uses contiguously during the prior years going back to a time when zoning laws didn't even exist. In 1987, a YouTube video called Mount Airy Throwback by former planning commission member Oscar Baker showed historic pictures of our property as well as many others in that era. Mr. Baker's video showed the sharp contrast of that time when this corner was a cozy rural two-lane road to the present-day action-packed hazardous intersection that developed. Route 27 has grown from two lanes to six, with traffic counts now at 20,000 vehicles daily, plus emergency vehicles charging this intersection, blowing their sirens at all hours of the day and night. With the additions of a post office, an active shopping center, and an industrial park, a major chunk of Mount Airy at this location was transformed from farms to commercial uses. Progressively, larger and more frequent commercial and community events are taking place at the carnival grounds, many of which cause this intersection to go viral, increasing chances that someone are going to get hurt and has caused our liability insurance to double. These significant changes in the neighborhood, which were approved by previous planning commissions and town officials, have irrevocably transformed this intersection to the point where it is no longer suitable for a residence. This property more than qualifies and satisfies the requirements set forth for community commercial zoning. It also enhances the town's stated desires to consolidate and concentrate businesses to best use existing infrastructure. In two recent surveys, town residents overwhelmingly have asked for additional shopping and employment opportunities in the areas where infrastructure already exists. Additionally, with more than 300 letters of support submitted to the town, our request carries significant residential and business support well beyond what is heard tonight. 
In closing, we would just like to say that since our rezoning request was made, many rumors and factual inaccuracy have surfaced in the form of petitions, letters, and the media saying that we are attempting to rezone the south side of Park Avenue or that some, there is nothing to stop the advance of rezonings from happening. The fact remains that our property has operated as a commercial business for more than 20 years with no commercial advance or no adverse effects on the quality of life or property values of the neighborhood. Additionally, the Planning Commission and the town staff have the time-tested tools to prevent this from occurring just as it has successfully done so in the past and are now employing at other commercial residential junctures for this very master plan. We thank you for your consideration and ask you for your support. My name is Urban Martin. <clears throat> I live at 703 North Warfield Drive, Mount Airy. <clears throat> I've been a resident of Mount Airy for quite a few years. Actually, my introduction to Park Avenue was when I was 18 years old. My father bought a house, three houses up from Dr. Bryan's house now, and told me that I was, that was supposed to be my project for the next couple of years to keep me off the streets. So that's what I did. But um, my father started taking his vehicles to Mr. Fowler, who had a garage there, in the early 1960s, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, he continued there till um, our friend, Mr. Bauman, purchased the property and then used it as a business for his masonry work and also for a produce stand until he sold it to Dr. O'Brien. Uh, my father took his trucks there. His uh, company was Martin Electric, uh, which has ex been in existence around Mount Airy for 66 years. Um, we consider the property, at least for my lifetime, has always been pretty much commercial property. And I don't see why, along with some other properties in Mount Airy, been used as commercial, why they shouldn't be commercial. Thank you. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity to offer my input to on the O'Brien on the O'Brien rezoning request. I'm Linda Coons. I am the current president of the Greater Mount Airy Chamber and a representative of Mount Airy businesses. I believe it's important for the town to help our businesses evolve. The services and the tax bases business provide to the town are invaluable. Dr. O'Brien has a 30-year record in the town as being a responsible and committed business owner. The town grew up around his property to a degree that his corner at 806 Park Avenue and Route 26 is an ideal location for further commercial development. The larger majority of town residents will ser be served by expanding businesses at the corner where the infrastructure and the traffic already exist. I support Dr. O'Brien's request to be rezoned. I believe it's good for the majority of Mount Airy residents, and I hope you approve his request. Thank you for your time. Good evening. My name is Paul Brown. I'm a relatively new member of uh, the Mount Airy community. But uh, I do not, quite frankly, understand uh, what the, the issue is here. Uh, the, the property is, and as has just been presented, has been a commercial property for a very long time. Uh, it would appear to me as though rezoning it would simply make it zoned according to what it already is and has been for years. So the reluctance is uh, a little bit incomprehensible to me. Uh, I don't know what the justification is or what the reluctance is, but uh, it seems as though it is inappropriate. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Sheila Pyatt. I live at 705 Park Avenue. Uh, we've lived on the block for uh, 31 years. 
uh, when we moved in, the Giemans lived there in O'Brien's house, and it was a residential house. I don't ever remember it being a commercial piece of property. Uh, I have written letters to the papers, and if you have read the papers, you've, you basically know that um, O'Brien was only allowed to set up a business because we, the people, allowed him. We signed a petition with the agreement that when he closed, retired, it goes back to residential. And so that being said, I would like to thank the Planning and Zoning Commission for doing the right thing by denying this property to be rezoned. Uh, this is a beautiful house. It faces Park Avenue. And I only hope that when it comes to the council, that they also do the right thing and rezone it. Because this piece of property, if it is zoned commercial, will just destroy the whole block and the surrounding neighborhood, which is more residential than it ever was. We now have a senior complex with a couple of homes, a couple of hundred homes. We have Windy Knolls. We have a school bus, school buses that come down a couple of times a day. So this is a residential area, and I hope um, the council does the same thing that the Planning and Zoning Commission did and had the insight to deny it. Thank you very much. and I live in the Wildwood Senior Development. Kay Mulliken. Okay. Speak into the microphone, please. I'd like to just say that the majority of the seniors who live in the Wildwood Development are very much concerned about this uh, kind of decision. We feel that uh, we are very private and need the security of, of the town. It's uh, been a pleasant time to been, be here, and Mount Airy has been very good to us. I, but we do feel that we should remain separate in the fact that there will not be any industrial or commercial property close to us. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, I'm David Thaler. I'm president of DS Thaler & Associates, engineers and planners uh, in Baltimore. I'm past president of the Maryland Society of Professional Engineers. I'm a fellow of I'm a fellow of the American Society of Professional Engineers and the National Society of Professional Engineers, and I also am guest scholar at the University of Baltimore uh, School of Law, where I teach uh, land use. Uh, we have uh, been asked, uh, as the board members may know, to make an analysis of the uh, O'Brien uh, property with respect to the zoning. And simply put, this is a property that is no longer suitable for residential. The only, the, the O'Briens operate their uh, veterinarian uh, business there. Uh, in a sense, they live over the store. Uh, the animals that are uh, hospitalized overnight, they have to stay there and take care of. But this is not a property that any of us would want to raise a family or uh, children at. They've been on the property for about 25 years, and as I'm sure you all know, uh, 25 years ago, uh, Route 27 was uh, two lanes, uh, the Twin Art Shopping Center wasn't there, the post office wasn't there, the carnival grounds really operated for the carnivals, for the volunteer fire department, and this has become a very uh, intensely developed, commercialized uh, corner, and simply put, it's not suitable for residential. And as you've heard, uh, any longer. And um, as you've heard tonight, it's really been effectively a commercial use for uh, many, many years. And both the post office and the O'Brien's veterinary clinic are effectively uh, commercial uh, uses. There seems to be a fear that uh, commercialization will creep up uh, Park Avenue. I think by the fact that these uses have been here for so many years proves that that fear is unfounded. I don't, it hasn't happened. I don't think it will. And with respect to Wildwood, the way the O'Brien property sits, it sits above the Wildwood community. There are only about three houses that immediately back up to it. And there's a uh, still a rather uh, well-wooded buffer between the property. And for, I've 
bid on both sides of the property, I really don't see uh, any impact. So I would encourage the planning board to zone this community commercial. And thank you for the opportunity to speak. Good evening. My name is Mike Curry, and I live in Conestoga Heights, which is not near the property. Uh, the, I hear everybody here talking about Dr. O'Brien's business, and it really, I've lived in this area for 30 years, and it really hasn't been a problem for the people that live there or to the community. Unfortunately, with the rezoning, though, it's not, it, it doesn't have to stay that small, a resi uh, uh, like a, a family-owned business. That property could be developed into a, a gas station a sheets. Uh, it could, if, if anybody takes the time to read what commercial, uh, the full commercial can be, basically 24 hour operation of businesses. So I just think it's important for the community to understand that, you know, it, it's not directed at Dr. O'Brien, his, his operation, like I said, I've, I've never been impacted by it. Um, but if you go to full commercial, once this is granted, it will stay full commercial. Um, and we're opening the door for gas stations, for, um, you know, sometimes buildings in excess of 65,000 square feet if it, work, if it meets the, the uh, building planning commissions that, that they have to go through. But just understand that nice little rural corner that we see there now could become something with a big parking lot, a lot of lights, and 24-hour business. It's just something to think about. I know that's not Dr. O'Brien's plan, but once the zoning has changed, and a property was to get sold, anything can go in there. That's what we're talking about tonight. Uh, thank you very much. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak about this property? Then Dr. O'Brien, rebuttal time. Um, Concerns about commercial creep um, hasn't occurred. Had commercial uses, post office, my commercial use. The powers to allow that are sitting at that table right there. About a 65,000 square foot store, it wouldn't fit on my whole lot. So the power to regulate what happens is within the planning commission and the town council. Um, we're asking for one property only, and that's ours, and we've always asked for one property. As far as a nice rural corner, that happened when we moved there. It's not a nice rural corner anymore. We can't sleep with our windows open anymore. It's, it's a hazardous intersection, and that has evolved since we've been there. So it's, uh, the comment about a rural corner, it just, it just, it, it, it's just not there anymore. Thank you. By the way, gas stations aren't a, a permitted by right in community commercial. It has to go through another process at the Board of Appeals to get a special exception. That's another, it's another protection for the neighborhood that's built into the code. And I might add that I've suggested to the Planning Commission that they make convenience stores have the same type of special exception process to protect the very neighborhood we live in. I don't want a, I don't want a convenience store next to me, and I certainly don't want a gas station. That's why that was put in as a special exception use, not a by permit or not a by right, even in the community commercial. So when you distill it down, how much can you put on a one acre lot that's objectionable? Okay, we're going to move on then to Wildwood Park Section 7. Is there a representative of the landowner or developer? All right, good. Good evening, uh, Planning Commission members. I am John McGuire. I'm an attorney representing Michael Berman Enterprises, the owner of the property. Uh, Mr. Berman is also here in the audience. Uh, we are uh, coming to you with a, from a little different uh, perspective in that you have recommended uh, the zoning that was requested from R2 to R3. 
So uh, I would just uh, sort of emphasize that we certainly support that. That is what we re requested. That is consistent with uh, a recommendation that goes back a few years that this Planning Commission made to the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, to approve the development plan. Uh, it has a special exception approval uh, for retirement uh, condominium buildings. And uh, that plan also came to the Planning Commission sometime uh, later and uh, I think was favorably received, but because of the water situation was, was deferred, and that's where it stands at this time. Uh, so having said that, I think I will reserve my time for any rebuttal if necessary. Thank you. Any residents who wish to speak? Hi, my name is uh, Glenn Zier. I live at uh, 808 Festival Avenue. Uh, my concern is with the building of Wildwood Park 7, not to saying they shouldn't be built, but the shortest distance between the main road of Ridge and Wildwood Park 7 is going to be Festival Avenue. Um, it, I don't know if you've ever driven on Festival Avenue. Currently, right now, it has a sidewalk system, but it is uh, at pavement level. Currently, if someone would not to, if they would not park on the sidewalk, you would not be able to get past down the road. So all the residents actually have to park on the sidewalk even to get one car past down the road. Now with the increased traffic of the number of people coming down there, it, being a two-way road, it's, it, when we first moved there, it was actually called a sack. And then at some point, they, the board decided to make it into open road. It's a very narrow road. There's only houses on one side. So the, for some reason, the road is not at normal width. So the problem is if it's going to have an extended amount of two-way traffic on there, there's going to be a major problem. It's just not going to fit down there. So my suggestion, I mean, two suggestions. One is my number one uh, idea would be to put it back to a cul-de-sac, or number two, at least make it a one-way road. Because you just drive down there, you'll see exactly what I'm saying. There's no way you can fit two cars passing each other if, if one person would be parked not on the sidewalk. So all the residents park on the sidewalk right now. So again, that's the shortest distance, I and mean, it's going to happen. It's a, even with the development currently there, there's a lot of people that shortcut through the road right now. And to see, see that going to double, it's going to be too much traffic for that one little road there. So thank you. My name is Bill Stancliffe. <clears throat> I only lived here in Mount Airy six years. So you know where I'm coming from. Um, one thing, I don't like the recommendation of the zoning to R3 because Wildwood Park, we're all older people. And we don't like too much traffic. And we don't have much traffic through there. Well, I disagree with you, Dan. Well, you don't live. Well, Marydale is not part of our property. Yes, it is. Not mine. <laughs> uh, now. I live on Jostin Way, the curvature. Where the big trucks have been hauling dirt, those waterways are where the water goes off the street down through the grill, the streets are being damaged around those. Now, when they start building the apartment up atop the hill, they're going to have big trucks coming down those roads, Candy Lane and Prospect. Candy Apple. Pardon me? Candy Apple. And Candy Apple. Anyway, it's going to cause damage plus disturbance. Those streets are narrow. And some places you can only park on one side. And if you park on two sides, you're going to have trucks that can't go through there. Uh, and secondly, they have a pond down there where the water goes to off the streets and all. And it's being redone by Berman at the moment. But it should be fenced in, too. And there's no uh, policy or recommendation that they put a fence around that yet that I know of. But children from the neighborhood will be in that water if you don't do it. And it'll be a hazardous, and you're going to lose a couple of little lives if something's not done about that. And so that's all I have to say about it.
My name is Jean Merson, and I live on Parade Lane. I think most of us, our main concern is Mr. Berman can build these houses. I think that's great. But the initial, if I understand it correctly, the interest is to come off of Ridge Road. It should come off of Ridge Road. It's going to go in Candy Apple and Promenade. Now, it's going to be a big building. We're going to have to have a ladder truck if there's a fire. Those streets are not large enough to take it. And I think he really needs to consider his entrance off of Ridge Road instead of Wildwood Park. Uh, the people are finding the shortcuts. There's lots more traffic there than it was 10 years ago, and it's only going to get worse. So I really would like you to consider the fact of Ridge Road rather than our community, Wildwood Park. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak to Wildwood Park 7? I'm Sally Merchant, and I live in Wildwood Park. I haven't lived there long, but the back of my house uh, it is up against a swale where there is drainage from the streets of the community, and it runs down to that pond that they've been discussing. My question is, where is the water from the new development going to drain to? We're talking a lot of... Um, parking area, a lot of parking lot. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of sewers that drain rainwater. And um, I'm just wondering where that water is planned to go. And if you're talking about in, uh, upping the density, that's more water. That's uh, larger areas. And I'm just wondering what the plan is for that. Um, in addition, I support what several people have said the streets are very narrow only two cars can pass and we are allowed to park on one side which means only one car can pass um, so right now if two cars come down and people are parked on on even just one side you have to wait until the other one goes to get past and, and you know everybody doesn't park on the side but we are allowed to do that um, so uh, I, I support the entrance off of um, the other road also. I think that uh, I know people would still use the community to get to the uh, condos, but at least there would be a main entrance off of the main road. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak about Wildwood Park? All right. Okay. Hello. My name is Sue Rowe, and my husband and I moved into Wildwood Park eight years ago last August. Um, we were the well, I was the minimum age of 62 then. My husband, 64. We're now 71 and 73. But um, we love our neighborhood there, and, and we like our street, very, our street. We like the neighbors across the street. But moving in so young, it was nice to have, well, did I say we live on Promenade Lane? So that's a wider street. And, and really, there wouldn't be problems with emergency vehicles there. Um, but we even moving in on the younger edge of the seniors, we, we enjoyed having a family with children across the street, and it sort of felt like I wasn't moving into home with all white heads, you know? And now I am one. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, you know, living there and, and being at home all day, you know, I see two kind of extremes of what happens on Promenade Lane. We have a lot of speeding um, with some of the 
uh, young people that are down at the end of the street, and some of them come from near the library, and then they speed down to the corner and then turn around towards festival. Um, we also have a lot of speeding by, I'm sorry to say, the postal people. You know, they take the mail down to the end of the street, and then they zoom back down the street. Uh, but then the other extreme is on Sunday afternoons, uh, summer evenings, we have residents from Lorien being pushed in wheelchairs down Promenade Lane because it's a nice wide street. You know, the traffic isn't moving there now, you know, in the evenings, uh, summer evenings and Sunday afternoons. And it's, it's very, very lovely to see these people, you know, being pushed down in wheelchairs. It's a level street and we're at the edge of the senior community. So that wouldn't, you know, be a very safe situation, um, you know, if this were a main pathway for the, uh, the condos that would be built. So I'm in favor of a separate road being built from Ridge Avenue there by Safe, you know, as you come up from Safeway. I guess it's called Ridge Road. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm Mary Rita Smith, and I live on Val no, Candy Apple Avenue. My concern is, in these condos, what is going to be the age limit? Nobody knows because we are in a senior Wildwood Park community. And we've heard that there's going to be children in the condos. And if that is so, then that means there's going to be school taxes and everything else in with us. So we would like that straightened out. Thank you. Ma'am, what was your name? What was your name? Mary Smith. Okay. This is not writing Smith. Anyone else wish to speak about Wildwood? All right. Do you have a, a final comment? Thank you. Uh, we heard some good comments, some fair comments. A uh, little frustrating. We heard some good comments um, and fair comments. Uh, a little frustrating because the concept plan that came to the Planning Commission has been deferred. So uh, most of the comments seem to center on traffic. Uh, promenade, the wider street, is sort of the main artery into the into this section of Wildwood Park. Um, there will be, there was already some traffic count and traffic circulation information presented before and accepted by the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, as you know, there may also be a traffic study and additional, certainly additional study uh, at the appropriate time when the, when the site plan comes through. So uh, this is not really the forum to address those types of details. Uh, and at the same time, admitting that they will need to be addressed. Uh, so there'll be, a, there'll be an appropriate time for that. Uh, in answer to the uh, question about age limit, under the code and under the approval by the Board of Appeals, uh, the residents must be 55 and older. The experts in their, this area will tell you that the average age is considerably higher than that, just statistically. Uh, the, uh, I think part of what we heard is this community works well as a retirement community. And uh, you may recall, and again, I'm repeating some things that have been said to you in the past, that uh, there's sort of a void in Mount Airy. Mount Airy does not have this type of retirement condominium project. It's the perfect completion of the retirement, uh, of the concept of Wildwood Park as a retirement community. So it adds that additional product uh, available to the general public, which we think is, is, a, is a, a sound, and, uh, and positive way of finishing off the final section of Wildwood Park. Um, I'm not sure I completely understood the, uh, one of the comments about the R3 versus 
uh, the surrounding zoning, but the surrounding zoning of Wildwood Park is R3. So what we're asking is to simply make it consistent with, uh, with what is already there. Uh, and that's, that's all I have. I appreciate your, your attention. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're now going to move to the East Ridgeville Ridge Court properties. And if we have any of the, the landowners or petitioners from the Holmes property, Haddad property, Chiropractic First, McKenzie Cantrus property, or the other Haddad property, we would request you to speak first in no certain order. My name is Andrew Williamson. I am the owner of Chiropractic First. My wife and I have been practicing in Mount Airy for about 13 years now. We've been in that location for nearly eight years. We have a special exception on that property, which is a non-resident professional that was granted to us back in 2005 unanimous, unanimously. Um, so I'm basically going to speak to the fact of the rezoning. I mean, it, the whole idea behind that property is that it's never going to be a, a residential property again. Uh, you know, I, I plan on obviously practicing for quite some time. I enjoy doing what I do. I plan on doing it for a long time. That being said, if it were to ever be converted back to a residential property, I just don't think it would work. The other interesting thing is if you ever looked over at those areas here, you can see kind of what we did. Um, and I'll just pass these around if you'd like to see them. <clears throat> this is my location that I have now. This is what I actually tore down to build. This is going to be 1403 Ridge Court. This is 1401. I don't own 1403 or 1401, but I do back up to those areas. They are now currently rental properties, and uh, I'm not sure if you know, but there are some things that happen over there that are not, you know, convenient for me, obviously. And I'm looking more for to protect my property values there. I've put a lot of money into that property, and I've kept it up real well. I've been a neighbor there for about, like I said, about eight years. And, you know, in, in that time, I've had no complaints. It's been a great situation for me. I'm very low impact. I'm there, I'm there about 25 hours a week. So that works out pretty well for most everyone around there. Um, from a standpoint of a water, water issues are always a big thing in this town. The interesting thing about my water is I can budget my water pretty well because I know exactly what I pay. I pay the exact same amount every single quarter because I don't hit the threshold. You're taking a, a, a it was a residence at one time using approximately 250 gallons of water a day to using virtually none. I probably use 250 gallons a, a month. Um, and as far as taxes, this is something that is obviously a, a benefit to, uh, to the town. It's not necessarily as big a benefit to me. My taxes have gone up substantially since I've, I've re re converted that property over. And in that time, there's nobody that's been there that lives, in the, that lives in there that goes to a school, but yet I'm supporting the schools. And that's my job as a businessman to support those schools, and I understand that. Um, and public services, very little as far as that's concerned. Um, employment, when we rezone these properties, we are allowing other people in this community to actually work in the community they live in. That's one of the biggest things they want to do. There's no reason for all, this, all the dollars to go outside of this county. We should keep everything with it within the town limits. And as far as increasing the business base, the key with this is that we need to, as best we possibly can, to double the number of businesses that are in t the town of Mount Airy. Now, that sounds crazy. I understand that. But we represent, we have about 10% of businesses as related to the number of uh, households. And we need to double that. All statistics show that we should be about 18 to 20% businesses. We bring up the tax base. We are underutilizers of, of services. And we can build beautiful places. I mean, we want to invest in this town. I've been here for you know, 13 years. I don't plan on going anywhere. And I want to serve to the best of my ability. And I would like to see things around me even be even better for me. And I understand that it's going to be an issue from a standpoint of maybe a little bit more traffic. But that area already has a big area down at the bottom. of It's a big industrial area. So great. I'm usually long-winded. <laughs> My name's John Holmes. I'm here to talk about 1401 Ridge Court. I'm a CPA, and I, I thought when I bought that property in 2007 about putting an office there. Now I wish I would have been a chiropractor, because Angela only works 25 hours a week. Um, <laughs> and I, I wish I could do that in February through April. But uh, the, the house is old. It's fallen down. Um, 
I don't think, I, I wouldn't want to put my family in it. I don't think it's suitable for one. It's right by Route 27, which is just getting more and more traffic. There's an empty lot behind. We're asking for limited commercial. It's been recommended, um, which means we can't put a gas station. We can't be open past 10 at night. We can't um, do a lot of things that I think would hinder somebody. It would be more like an office type building. And it's a 5,000 square foot footprint. And my lot's only 0.4 acres. So you really can't put anything large on there. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Hannah Haddad, and I live at 4610 Griffith Road, and I own two of the lots that's uh, in question. One is the uh, vacant lot on, Ridge, on Ridgeville, and uh, this, lot is up, uh, this lot is up for uh, a neighborhood profession, and I have absolutely no uh, uh, means of doing anything to that lot in the meantime. Uh, I just was thinking ahead of time and uh, I think it's it'd be good for the neighbor for the neighborhood to be a neighborhood profession just in the future if I want to do uh, like an office or something like that on it. The other lot I want to talk about is the 1403 Ridge Court. Uh, I've owned that lot for about uh, six years and I've had four different tenants and uh, every time they leave before because of the noise and the um, Sorry, the um, cowboy building across the street. The street is about 14 to 15 feet wide, and the cowboy building is 100% leased right now, and there's a lot of traffic in and out. And uh, as a matter of fact, the tenant right now just called me last month, and, and he's trying to leave too because his kids can't play outside, and they, you know what I mean? There's too much traffic. And uh, that house is absolutely uh, just not suitable for residential. Uh, either tear it down or, you know, change it to a limited commercial. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mackenzie Cantress. I have the law office there at 605, 604 East Ridgeville Boulevard. Been there for nine years. I'm not going to get too far into it. I didn't even ask for the zoning, but it makes sense with the changes for everybody in the area. Uh, you know, it's changed. It, it fits for what goes there. And uh, I'll reserve on anything uh, to reserve to any comments that come up. I will indicate, though, there was one inaccuracy state, stated by one of the prior people. There's no way Dr. Williamson works 20 hours a week. Because <laughs> I'm right across the street and I watch. <laughs> Again, uh, my name is Mike Curry, and I do live on Conestoga in Conestoga Heights, which is actually below all the properties we're talking about. Uh, Dr. Williamson, yes, your building is beautiful. It fits the, the, the area. Um, you know, a little bit of traffic, not a major, not a lot of cars going out of your property. Um, but our concern is the traffic we're going to be talking about. Um, Mr. Haddad, I believe your name uh, is, you, you talked about a lot of traffic already coming out of the, uh, the, the cowboy building. So what we're talking about right there behind, Mr. F behind Five Guys Burgers, uh, we're talking about three properties that people are looking to go to limited commercial. Limited commercial could be anything from drug stores, wallpaper, hardware store, family apparel, finance, and again, not open past 10 o'clock in the evening. Um, some professional buildings, restaurants, uh, as long as there's no drive-through. So. What we're looking at is if you take that corner and you were to, and I wouldn't suggest that your building come down, but if somebody was to buy it, Dr. Williamson, they could knock it down, we could end up with a mini mall there. Now, for the traffic, if anybody's familiar with getting down East Ridgeville, going around behind Five, Guy, uh, Five Guys Burgers, it's a hard 90. It's not a very safe road. Uh, the, you gotta be real careful coming up to it. And all we're talking about here now is adding more traffic. Uh, there are no sidewalks. It's a very narrow road. The kids walk up and down the street, but a lot of people, you got to walk on, on people's yards. So I, I have no issue with people wanting to rezone their properties. But we also have the right as residents to say we don't want that because we don't want a mini mall at the top of the hill. We've already got enough traffic. 
if the old Shoppers Food Ride or Shoppers ever reopens as, as another supermarket, which it very well could be, or and God knows what kind of business, more traffic. That's all we're talking about here, and that's all we want to say is the residents do not want all of this commercial, limited commercial development at the top of the hill. Thank you very much. My name is Roxanne Hemphill. I live at 605 Park Avenue. I'm also the Board of Appeals chairperson. I want to reiterate something to the public. Yes, limited commercial does allow some of these things. However, they must be approved through the, bo for, through the Board of Appeals process. So anytime someone um, wants to put um, a limited commercial even if it's a professional building, they still must come through the planning and zoning and through the Board of Appeals. It's not just a blanket, okay, I can do this. And I just want you to keep that in mind when we're looking at these different things. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak about these properties? Any other comments? Okay, then we will move on to the Carnival Grounds, 1008 Twin Arch Road. Uh, good evening. Can you all hear me? Uh, good evening. For the record, uh, my name is Bruce Dean. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Linos and Blocker in their Frederick office. Um, I've been working with the Mount Airy Volunteer Fire Company for the last several years on their behalf uh, regarding the Carnival Grounds property where we are tonight. Um, we submitted written requests back in 2009 and 2010 um, asking for a rezoning from the current R2 to the proposed community commercial. Um, just for some uh, background, the property is about 37 acres. It's been operated as the Carnival Ground since 1953. Um, as some of your earlier cases stated, uh, the uses have expanded over the years. Um, and it is currently utilized for numerous community events, including those such as tonight, uh, as well as for a variety of community sports facilities and the annual carnival. But that entire list, none of them are residential uses. Um, because this request has been well documented uh, through written materials, I don't want to overkill tonight, um, but I did notice on the town's website that this rezoning request was not even mentioned, um, nor the planning where they still want it made, and the, the volunteer fire company is still requesting uh, the community commercial zoning on this. Um, Notwithstanding the fact that there are obviously sentimental reasons uh, why folks might not want this request to be granted and why there's practical reasons why it would cause difficulty to the town and to the fire company, um, nevertheless, there, the facts remain that this property is not properly zoned residential and this is a busy thoroughfare. Um, it is a growing thoroughfare, as, the, as several of the prior cases have mentioned, and the idea that this would be developed as a residential development, I think, probably flies in the face of what anyone would like to see here. Uh, Mr. Walters from the fire company did reiterate to me tonight that they have no current plans to develop this property, uh, but it is the sole major asset that the fire company has, and in planning for the future, they would like it to be properly zoned. Um, for all these reasons, we do think that when you're doing a, a master plan for the town that you do need to plan for the future. You don't plan for the past, you don't plan for the present, you plan for the future. And what the, the volunteer fire company wants to do is plan for one day in the future the proper use of the carnival grounds, and we think that is for community commercial. Uh, so with that, um, we do respectfully request your consideration of this request. And uh, if there are folks here who say stuff that I need to rebut, I might do that. Thank you.
Anyone else wish to speak with regard to the carnival grounds? Okay, good. Good evening. I'm Bruce Walls, first vice president of the Mount Airy Volunteer Fire Company. And as our attorney presented to you, uh, we continue to pursue the rezoning of the grounds, uh, not for the purpose of selling them tomorrow, but to have them properly zoned because as was stated, this is one of our most important assets. It's also interesting to note that since, Oscar, you can correct me on the date, 1927, we've had a fire company in this town. And you have trusted that fire company to come to your aid when you have medical emergencies, injuries, fires, a cat in a tree. <laughs> Yet, we find it disturbing that the citizens of this town will not trust us to do what is right with 37 acres of land. And I want to reiterate the fact again, we have no intention of selling this land. You probably didn't notice when you came in tonight because it's dark out. There's a new roof on this building that was put on Monday, Tuesday, and today. That was money that you donated to us, and we put it into this roof because we intend to be here for a while. We had a building put up last year, which the commission approved as an exemption, to facilitate our carnival activity, which is our major fundraiser. And I'd like to point out a fact about that fundraiser we have to use 40% of the money we get from that carnival to pay salaries, to have paid personnel, so that you get the service you deserve. So we're not going anyplace. We need to have a carnival. Two years ago, we spent $35,000 to have the electrical system here at the carnival grounds put underground so that we wouldn't have a catastrophe in the middle of our carnival and not be able to continue with it because it is a major fundraiser, it is a major source. We're not going anyplace. Now let's talk about the real 800 pound grill in the room, the ball fields. I think that's the issue. We won't say it, people won't acknowledge it, but everybody knows the reason that this is such an issue is the ball fields. There's an old saying, no good deed goes unpunished. And the fire company back in the 1950s put those ball fields in to support this community, just like we do with everything else we do. And yet, that's being held over our heads as we feel a significant reason why our zoning request continues to be denied. So I asked you, we are here, we are your fire company. We are as much a part of you as anybody else. We want to do what is right. We ask for your trust to be able to do what is right. Thank you. Hi, my name's Jimmy Lenton. I'm the treasurer of the Mount Airy Fire Company, have been for 35 years. I was one of the teams that was allowed to play over at the first ball fields over here, and that was a lot of years ago. So at the same time, we have a lot of members in the fire company that are in my position as well that have played on those ball fields. So despite what many people, many newcomers, what they think, uh, we are 100% in favor of the ball fields and keeping the grounds as is. The preservation of the zoning to resell is only for something that we started years ago in fear of the dropping of the volunteers responding to calls. However, as time goes on, in the neighboring counties, if you're familiar with them, the companies in Liz or Howard, Montgomery, there are very few total volunteer companies anymore. Most of them are paid. So at some point in time, that's going to happen here. We do have 23 paid firefighters now. They're mostly on our ambulance. We do have a driver in the station along with the volunteers. But eventually that will change, and hopefully it won't, but it's going to, just as we've seen it happen in our neighboring communities and counties. Uh, with that said... To sell the carnival grounds, in my opinion, as treasurer, 
we would then become money managers. And at that time, we will find that the county, uh, I've got no interest in that and neither does the membership. So with uh, the sale of the carnival grounds, all we would be doing would be giving the money to some government agency to run the fire company. And that's not the heart of the Mountain Area Volunteer Fire Company. We are here to keep this grounds the way it is. Uh, just a point of information, probably every three months we get proposals from big companies, developers, and anyone that uh, has a lot of money that thinks this is the ideal spot to put a commercial establishment. The fire company voted on two different occasions that we don't even entertain. We don't want them. We told the president anything comes in, we don't even want to hear about it. Uh, so this happens quite often, but we ignore it. So with, as Bruce said, the amount of money that we have invested in here that uh, you won't see, the underground, the, uh, the buildings and what we do, we're, we're here for the long haul. But we do think that the people are using the ball fields and thinking, well, we'll keep it zoned the way it is and they won't do anything. The only message I see from that is you're telling us to get rid of the ball fields and then we'll consider rezoning it. So the monkey's on your back. Thank you. Oscar, are you coming up to speak? Right there. <laughs> My name is Oscar Baker, and I've been here ever since. <laughs> but I just wanted to, I couldn't, I can't sit here and uh, let this opportunity go by because. Uh, Really, I've told the guys at the firehouse, if they ever sell this ground for development, after I'm gone, I'm coming back to haunt them. Because uh, I, I'll guarantee you it won't be sold while I'm living. Of course, it might not be long. But, but it, this, is, this is something that needs to be really looked at closely. With the surrounding commercialism that we have at this place, it just don't make sense to go along with having residential. Who, who in their right mind would want to live next to 27 as a residential property anyway? And I, I could go on and on. I was president of the company when we bought this ground. 46 acres for $13,000 back in 1953. The place was grown up where we were sitting at tonight was nothing but pine trees and scrub oaks. And we had a one-day cleaning deal set up here where all the f local farmers brought in their chainsaws and tractors. We got two bulldozers from the National Guard because we had membership in that. And in one day, we had WGAY from Silver Springs come here and set up uh, and broadcast from this place. The ladies auxiliary furnished meals t during the day for the guys who worked here. That was a tremendous asset for the local people to do at that time. And... Within 24 hours, we had this place in shape for our carnival the first year. So, and then this building was built in 1959 by most of the firemen. The blocks were all laid. We had to pay for that, but the roof and everything, because I fell off the roof and had to be hauled to the hospital, but I had an almost broken leg. But anyway, that sticks in my mind. But I wanted you to know that the community spirit that built this place and have helped us all these years don't deny the effort that we have and want to continue because once you get a volunteer, we try to keep them. And as Jim and them pointed out, it's going to be paid one of these days. And we shouldn't have to make money to pay people. That's the reason I'm going to come to one of the town meetings and explain to them that uh, we need a little help. We only have money from the county to, to get one ambulance on the road. And there's not many days that we don't have two or three ambulances out at one time. So we got to we got to get money from somewhere to 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 document and get the second ambulance on the highway. I, that's slipping away from what we're talking about. But as long as I have a breath in my body, this place will never be developed. Thank you. Once again, I'm.
Roxanne Hemphill at 605 Park Avenue. Um, I'll speak as a um, citizen. I, I know the firemen have been up here. Um, I cannot tell you how valuable this fire department is to my family. My father was taken by ambulance. I cannot begin to tell you how many times. And most of the people on the ambulance actually, well, they knew the house number. They knew my father by name. They knew coming in what his problem was going to be, what they needed to do, where they needed to go with him, and to also calm my nerves and my mother's nerves. He was taken at least 17 times by ambulance from my house um, to Frederick Hospital. I believe and I trust, I give my whole life and my trust to the firemen. I have grown up here all my life. I live in the house that I grew up in. I wish for them to have this rezoning. If something were ever happened and they needed to sell it, they needed to move, they would be able to have the um, property that they would be able to grow on. I've seen the ambulance from one to two to three and now a rescue squad. And once again, I just can't say enough about them. And I just wish that they could get the thing that they want the most. Thank you. Anyone else? My name's Sean O'Neill. Uh, I'm actually not even a town resident, so uh, I'm here as a, a citizen. Quite frankly, I wasn't planning on on speaking tonight, uh, I didn't realize the fire department was going to be represented here. Um, ironically, I'm also the treasurer of Maya, who utilizes the, the fields here on the grounds. Uh, we're also joined by the president of Maya, Brian Compton, who's in the back of the room as well. Um, I find it quite ironic, really, that uh, we're, we're standing on zone that's, that, or ground that's zoned residential, that's uh, used for definitely for commercial purposes, um, and we, we, we don't support the rezoning of that. However, you know, as part of this master plan, we're considering taking a 200-plus acre farm, uh, being Harrison Leiser, and annexing it into the town and changing that zoning to commercial to support some, uh, some office buildings. So um, Coincidentally, I live on Boatler Road as well, so that, that's what brought me here was any discussion related to Harrison Leiser. Uh, I can't say officially one way or the other what Maya supports because we haven't, we haven't discussed it. Um, I grew up playing on those fields. I've lived here my entire life. My father was uh, president of Maya many, many years ago. Um, but I can tell you personally, uh, and as a, a board member and as a parent who has kids involved in Maya, I don't have any concerns that the fire department is going to unload this property for, for money. Uh, and, and if they do, uh, I have full faith in the fact that it would, would be to benefit the community. Uh, I've had many, many candid conversations with Mr. Linton and uh, Terry Baker as well. And I, you know, on behalf of May, I will thank them for their support. And uh, as a kid that grew up on those fields and doesn't ever want to see them go away, um, I can appreciate what they're trying to do uh, and would support them wholeheartedly. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak for or against this property? All right, then we'll move to the Baker Avenue properties. Do we have anyone from the Foremans, the Altamares, the Holtz, or the Porters who wish to speak? Good evening. My name is David Holt. I live at 9 Baker Avenue. The properties on Baker Avenue, I'm not sure if you're familiar with where our property is. Most people aren't aware where we are, even FedEx can't find us. We are located directly behind Town Hall, and we consist of six buildings, five of those being residential and one rent rental unit being the old hotel. The five houses are beautiful houses that we've all put a lot of money into, 
and they're beautiful houses occupied by families and none of us want our properties put at risk by any type of commercial classification given to them. So I ask that you maintain our current zoning as residential and <coughs> our properties sit in the heart of the historic district of Mount Airy. And it seems to me that we should be working on preserving our, our past and our history and not putting our history at risk with any type of commercial rezoning. Now I know that they'll say that the purpose of the downtown zone has a clause in it to try to maintain a historic feel, but, <clears throat> but that seems to me to have a loophole in it that you could drive a Mack truck through because you know someone could come through and bulldoze the properties and say, well, we want to redo, redo this with commercial properties that have a historic feel to them. And it, it just seems wrong to me that we would be putting our, the heart of the historic residential at risk. So my, I'm here today as myself, and I'm sure as you know, I've gathered comments from every person on my street, and not a single person that lives on Baker Avenue is, is for this rezoning. So I'm not sure why, if, and no one is standing up saying they're requesting it. So I'm not sure why we're even being considered to be rezoned. And I've asked, no one has been able to explain it to me. That's all I have to say. Thank you. My name is Susan Holt, and that was my husband who just spoke. And like he said, we both um, live at Nine Baker Avenue, uh, directly behind Town Hall. And we moved into that house 13 years ago. And we moved from Baltimore City. And when we got here, we felt like we had opened our eyes and, and got to heaven. We absolutely love this town. We bought that house as is from a gentleman named Joe Wagner, who uh, was a volunteer firefighter at the old firehouse there on Main Street. And I remember he was put in a nursing home um, and his, we actually bought the house from his daughter. And when we walked through the house, it looked like it hadn't been lived in for a long time. Um, he was old and he wanted to die there, but he, they had to take him away. And I had asked, there was a plaque on the wall uh, recognizing him as one of the volunteer firefighters. And I asked to keep it and I still have it. And my point is, is that we worked, you know, day and night for 10 years to bring that house back to life and to maintain the character and the integrity of that home. And we still believe that Mr. Wagner is there. And I don't see any logical reason why those houses, our homes should be taken from us um, when there are plenty of vacant, commercial properties, um, Main Street, within walking distance from where we live. Um, there are vacant properties there already zoned commercial. People can go in there and, and, and conduct their business. Our neighbors across the street have lived there for over 40 years. Our neighbors next door have lived in that house for over 25 years. And the other neighbors have been there as long as we have 13 years. We love it. It's our home. And we see no reason why it should be zoned commercial. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to add comments for the Baker Avenue properties? Okay. Then we're going to go back to the beginning of the list. The first one, two, three, four, five, six properties were proposals that were denied by the Planning Commission. We've already spoken to 806 Park Avenue and the Carnival Grounds. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak with regard to the Beck property, the east side of Route 27? Existing zoning is R7, high-density residential. The requested zoning was community commercial. 
no one who wishes to speak about that property. How about 20 Park Avenue? Existing zoning is RE, residential existing. The requested zoning was downtown zone. Okay. The next property, 1010 South Main Street, the requested existing zoning rather is RE, residential existing. The requested zoning was community commercial. Anyone wish to talk about 1010 South Main? Okay. The next on the list is 302 Watersville Road. The existing zoning is R3, medium density residential. The requested zoning of community commercial. Is the property owner or anyone who else wishes to comment here? All right. This is moving along nicely. Okay, then we will move to the Craft Farm property. Existing zoning for Craft Farm is R2, low density residential. The recommended zoning is conservation. Is either the owner or someone who wishes to speak about the Craft Farm property? Anyone want to make a comment? Then we'll move to the Prospect Road properties. Three properties on Prospect Road. Castle Center at 106 Prospect Road, currently community commercial. Actually, all three of these. The Castle Center at 106, the Brown property, the castle itself at 104, and also the Brown property at 104 are all currently community commercial. The recommended zoning is to change to downtown zone. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to any of these three properties? Then that takes us to the cold storage property at 3 Hill Street. Existing zoning is industrial. The recommended zoning is downtown zone. Anyone wish to make a comment? Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Brian Marcus. I live on Hill Street and moved in there about eight years ago, back when the cold storage was still active and in use. And um, I don't mind the fact that it's going to go to a downtown zoning. I just want the concerns that some of our neighbors have as to what's going to happen with all the traffic. Industrial, when it was a cold storage, there wasn't really any traffic. It was trains would come through every once in a while, and that was it. Since that's died down and, and been torn down, it's I guess it always has been kind of a cut through for downtown for people heading to Prospect. You can't drive down, you know, down Main Street. It's too narrow. A lot of cars cut through, so they come right in front of our house. There's kids playing with the townhouse neighborhood right there. They're always in the street. So if you open that up to downtown zoning, and that's almost seven acres there, they could put who knows what, a lot of things, restaurants, bars, whatever. How are all these people going to get there? they're probably not gonna cut through downtown to try and cut over to get to that area. They're gonna go right down our road. And it's very narrow and windy if anybody's driven down there. And people park cars on the side of the road and it's again down to one lane. So the biggest concern is how are we gonna deal with the traffic that's gonna come down our road at that point. Thanks. Any other comments regarding the cold storage property? All right. Then we'll move on to the Hill Street properties. There are two. The Warthin property at 103 Hill Street. The Palovich property at 105. They're both currently uh, existing zoning of industrial. The recommended zoning for each is downtown zone. Does anyone wish to speak 
to either of these two properties, the two Hill Street properties. Right. We've already spoken about the East Ridgeville Ridge Court properties, so we'll move, move to Park Avenue, the municipal parking lot properties. There are three properties in question. Raymond Law Center at 18 Park Avenue, currently RE residential, existing, Recommended zoning is Neighborhood Professional NP. The Baker property at 207 Cross Street, currently RE Residential Existing, recommendation of Downtown Zone. And the Henley property at 203 Cross Street, existing zoning of Residential, RE, recommended zoning of Downtown Zone. Is there anyone who wishes to comment on any of these three? Okay, there being no interest in those, we'll move to the Colwell Avenue South Main Street properties. There are three properties there. La Bella Medi Spa at 1304 South Main Street. Currently RE residential existing, recommended zoning of NP Neighborhood Professional. Dr. Miller's property at 4 Colwell Drive, currently RE residential zoning, with a recommendation to change to NP, Neighborhood Professional. And lastly, the Gosnell property at 3 Colwell Drive, currently is RE residential, existing, recommended zoning of NP, Neighborhood Professional. Anyone wish to speak? to any of these three properties. All right. Then we'll move to Twin Arch Business Park. A portion of Backacre Circle, uh, right off of Century Drive. It's uh, slightly less than two acres. It's only 1.93 uh, acres of approximately 51 acres. Currently existing zoning of R2, low density residential. The recommended zoning is industrial. Anyone wish to comment about that parcel or that zoning recommendation? Well, somebody said they were going to speak. <laughs> At least I have one tick mark by it. Anyone wish to say anything? Okay. Are there any other rezoning comments or considerations that anyone here would like to make to us? Okay. Yes, sir. Good evening. Again, my name is Hannah Haddad. Again, about the uh, Ridge Court and the Ridgeville uh, zoning. Yes. The gentleman who spoke, uh, he lives way down the street. And uh, I think uh, his interest is more than traffic and stuff like that. And I don't want to get into it. Uh, but I think the rezoning for that corner, the only thing it's going to do is enhance the look of the town. Uh, like somebody said, there's 20 cars, drives by 27 every day. And uh, those two houses on Ridge Court, that's the only two houses that you can see. Um, so I just recommend that, uh, you know, the commission will uh, go ahead with the rezoning. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anyone else wish to make a, an additional rezoning comment? All right. Yes, Mayor. Tonight's hearing involved properties that are already scheduled to be zoned to rezone. I was talking to someone out in the audience that 
also has a concern with rezoning and there may be some other properties around town that may have some concerns should those people fill out yellow forms submit them to the planning committee for uh yes. consideration well i asked a question and got an answer for all of you that are still have properties you're concerned about so thank you and thank you to the community for coming out and speaking it was a great turnout i was involved in the 2003 master plan we only had one person speak that did not have development interest and uh tonight it was a lot different so it's great is there anyone here who who wishes to publicly comment about any other properties that you would like for consideration of rezoning? In general to rezoning or in general to other content of the master plan? Because that's coming next. About a comment about the master plan. Okay, well, you can kick it off. Because that was going to be the next section. Well, I hate to be on camera. That's why I don't want to be um, <laughs> up here. But I just... And your just, name is? My name's Laura Kandarian. I live on Main Street. All right. We're, uh, we're right, um, right in the heart of the changes. When we moved in, it was all houses, and now it's California tortilla and everything else. And I look across to the Walmart, and... and um, I just wanted to say I thought a lot of thought was put into the master plan and I can see that a lot of care was taken and most of the people who spoke tonight are, you know, the border people and the concerns are, you know, I just thought everyone had great comments. Um, specifically for our property, I'm not quite sure what to do because we have no intention of um, moving. But it is, you know, definitely encroaching. So I'm kind of, um, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to request a rezoning. But when you look at where we are, mm -hmm. it, um, you know, it's all around us and across and down the street. It's neighborhood professional. What, what is your address? 1208 South Main. All right. Where exactly? I'm. I look down at the Walmart um, Garden Center. There's neighborhood professional, two houses to my left across the street. To my right is the Verizon building and the, and the malls. Okay. Then I have one residential neighbor on either side. Okay. And then I have the Maddie Spa. The Spa. That's and where you may know it. She borders the Spa. Okay. Yeah, I'm not exactly border. I'm one away from the Spa. Yeah. You're across and, from the Verizon building. And the vet and the... Okay. I'm not. I'm across from the Walmart. I'm not across. Oh, yeah, from yeah. Okay. But anyway, I wanted to say neighborhood mm -hmm. professional so far has worked. You know, it, it really has limited the traffic. So I don't have a complaint with that. Good. Um, so thank you. thank you for that. But I just wonder, looking to the future, we're kind of like this little thumb of residential housing, completely surrounded, mm -hmm. with high high density behind us. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. I know you've tried to address anomalies in the master plan, and I just feel like that one was missed. But okay. I'm kind of torn because I don't want to make a request because I don't want, you know, I don't have a plan to have a business. So Understood. I just wanted to speak out. Understood. Thanks. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Councilman Everett. Can one of the things I'd suggest to you, if you would like to meet with staff, um, staff is open and available for you. If you don't want to do rezoning, that's great. If you're thinking about it, that's great. If you have concerns about property uses, our staff, town staff, your town staff is available. Please call them. Heather Smith, who's right here, is. I have, I have okay. Just want to make sure that you know that's available. Yeah. Anyone else wish to make? A comment about any portion of the master plan anything in general in that regard hi uh, I'm back Bruce Dean again when and blocker again speaking for a client um, which I submitted a letter to Heather uh, I guess about 10 days ago um, we just discovered this property on um, Twin Arch Road that it's on the north side of Twin Arch it backs up to the Twin Arch Business Park um, it's the only property along that strip strip that's not in the town. Um, it's about a half acre vacant lot. It's surrounded on three sides by the town. It's surrounded on three sides by industrial zoning. 
Um, and our request really is just to have it shown as a future annexation area. The intent of the owner, which is Twin Archer Associates Family Limited Liability Partnership, would be to one day annex it into the town and incorporate it into the business part. It's just a, like I said, a little less than half acre lot sitting there on the road surrounded by the town. So that's all. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, my name is Richard Titus. I'm an attorney up in Westminster. Um, also here tonight representing Dr. and Mrs. Full and Twin Arch Limited uh, Liability Partnership. Um, I'm here not to talk about any rezoning. I think this will probably be the first issue where we're not talking about a specific parcel we're looking to have changed. It's rather a question or a concern about the uh, water and sewer master plan component of the town's master plan, which as you all know is sort of developed together with Carroll County where effectively you're adopting theirs and working together with it. The concern is very is very specific. Dr. Full's property back on Back Acre Circle where it has the industrial park was originally developed with a concept plan being submitted years ago, I believe it was eight or, eight or 10 years ago, showing the industrial park, but also had a portion of it about 55 acres in size that's always been zoned R2 and has been slated for residential development. Um, what has happened is the, the existing water and sewer classifications for it as of the 2011 plan uh, showed it in the zero to three year priority uh, uh, classification. Um, in this plan, it has been changed, what I'd call a drastic change, and I submitted to you a letter on November 26 with a number of attachments that'll more clearly depict what I'm referring to here. Um, it sort of drastically changed it, where now it's in the 10-year, uh, effectively the longest out-deferred uh, uh, classification. Uh, our concern for it is, is very simple. Um, we had, have already begun and have been moving forward with the potential development of this property. A concept plan was submitted about two years ago. It's already been fully reviewed by all county agencies favorable comments. It's the first residential plan that is going to be utilizing your new open space ordinance. We've had multiple meetings with town staff and I don't want to speak for them, but it was favorably reviewed as far as the design criteria and the guidelines as far as what we're incorporating. The reason this hasn't come before you obviously is because of there was two adequate facilities issues. The school, which now has been addressed, and water with the consent agreement recently being exited with the project in good faith with the belief that we're going to be uh, ready to go as soon as water is is available for the project. Um, the project will still have to go through APFO testing. It makes no sense to take something that's already a defined commodity that is moving forward and assign it to water and sewer classification that is so far out in the distance, um, it's inconsistent with what we've been doing. Uh, we'll have to meet APFO standards one way or the other. Uh, so if it's in the zero to three year classification, which is what we've been in, we'd like it to stay there. Um, and whether we work out water situations with the new water that's been found available after the consent agreement has been uh, exited, whether it's finding a new water source ourselves, whether it's the wells on Harrison Leisher, who knows, we, we understand we still have to meet APFO testing, but to effectively put us in a category that is so drastically different than what we've been labor, laboring under for the past uh, number of years uh, just seems unfair and we'd ask you to give consideration to restoring it back to the zero to three year classification that it's had. So. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to comment about any aspect of the master plan? All right, then again, I want to thank everyone who turned out tonight. This was extremely efficient, and I think it was a very, very effective exchange of commentary. Um, I think the rest of the Planning and Zoning Commission joins me in, in expressing appreciation for the way this was conducted and what you had to say. Thank you so much for your feedback and your comments. I would also reiterate to you if you wanted to make additional comments, uh, we still have staff here. They're, they are accepting written comments to, tonight. And that will continue through close of business this Friday. So there's a couple of more days, okay? If there was someone else you know who wanted to be here but was not able to, or there's other comments you wish to give us, we're very receptive to it. And we urge you to do so. Uh, again, the next step for us is to take 
all the comments we've already received, plus the, uh, the tape that we'll get from this evening, and to begin to look over it in earnest. And we'll discuss and deliberate that either on the 16th or the 18th. We're planning a work session in December. More than likely, we'll have more material than we can work through and adequately discuss in that one work session. We'll probably trail over into January, okay? And I'm sure the messenger will uh, have some updates as to how that's going. We would hope to be able to present our final draft to town council by no later than February, but it remains to be seen. We're not going to rush looking over carefully the feedback we've received. We want to be sure the final draft we give to the council adequately reflects everything that we've heard and you've presented to us. Anybody have anything else? Again, thank you so much for coming tonight. We appreciate it.